Originally released back on October 21st of 2021 by developer Southpaw Games, Skull the Hero Slayer is a fun take on the ever-popular roguelite genre. Featuring well-animated 2D pixel art, wry humor, and a wealth of different playstyles, the game is now out on Game Pass for console, PC, and cloud. How does it stand up to the big boys in the genre, such as Dead Cells? Pretty darn well. Please allow me to explain why in the Xbox era review of Skull the Hero Slayer. You begin your journey as the cute little skeleton demon, Skull. Your kingdom has been sneak attacked by the evil humans who are using some sort of crystal to mind control your once allies. The main goal to start is reaching the Demon King at the top of his castle and saving him from the first hero who is an incredibly powerful human. To do this, you will borrow the heads of your fellow demons, each coming with a unique set of powers and attacks. This is where the game shines as it is quite slow to start and the early common and rare skull types are basic to use and can be a bit boring. Once you start finding legendary and unique skull types though, things really take off. A few of my favorites have been the Prisoner from Dead Cells, who had all the attacks and sound effects that you'd hope for, and also a fiery biker clearly inspired by Ghost Rider who uses his flame trailing leaving motorcycle to smash through the game's many opponents like a madman. These skull types can have a left and right trigger ability which are randomly chosen from a small pool that is unique to each skull. Adding to this build variety are your items, of which you can have up to 9. The variety of these is impressive and I found myself experimenting constantly to push just a bit further with each run. Let us get more into the way things control, which thankfully is quite well. Your control layout is standard for the genre, with X being your main attack, which will stun lock most smaller enemies. A jumps, and thankfully you get a double jump right from the start. B is a dash, which you also have two available in quick succession. And Y is your main interaction button. You'll have left bumper, which is used to swap between your two available skull types on the fly, and using it unleashes a unique ability depending on which skull you are changing into. Right bumper is tied to your quintessence, which can be a wide variety of spells and abilities that vary from things such as giant hands punching down or small little slugs that attach to the faces of enemies and amplify the damage you do to them. Left and right trigger, as previously mentioned, are your two ability attacks, which vary greatly with each skull type. Controls aren't as tight as Dead Cells, though few games have reached that level of greatness, if I'm going to be fair. Each room is a mix of light platforming and large enemy counts. To proceed, you must kill every enemy in the room. After that, you can grab your reward and choose one or two different door types that each have their own look. It lets you know what's going to be on the other side of them. Say for instance, a green skull on a door means you'll find a new skull to use, while red ones adorned with jewels and gold mean you'll gain a lot of the per run gold currency at the end. You use that gold currency at the in-run vendor to boost your current run with various items, spells, and health gains. There is also a bone currency that is only per run. This is used to power up your various skulls into greater forms for as long as that run lasts. The permanent upgrades for skull are tied to the dark crystals you acquire from defeating enemies. These are used on upgrades at the starting area that stay forever and slowly but surely massively power you up so that after a few hours of playing, you'll be clearing the first few areas incredibly quickly compared to how long runs can be at the beginning. Unlike many roguelites, health drops and regeneration is rather frequent, which is good as you will be getting hit a lot from the sheer numbers thrown at you. This is not a short game either. You can expect a solid 25 hours or so before you roll end credits with upwards of 40 hours if you want to see everything the game has to offer. Graphically, things look pretty great. Attacks are easy to read, and effects rarely obfuscate what is going on around you. Enemy attacks are well choreographed in general, and I rarely felt cheated when I was hit. The action gets hectic, and it's well animated. Image quality stays crisp, and I did really enjoy that art style. It's not a serious game, and that style matches the tone very well. Music-wise, it's a bit of a mix of okay and excellent. A few of the cutscenes are voiced, though not in English, and are well done. 
The majority of the game is text only, and the writing pushes cheesy jokes without it ever being too over the top. The options are rather limited, but there is a rookie mode that allows you to lower incoming damage by 50% if you're having a tough time and you want a more casual experience. I didn't run into any bugs, but I was sad to see that the game does not support quick resume as of yet, and since it came out nearly four months ago, I'm not sure if it ever will. In conclusion, Skull the Hero Slayer has been a pleasant surprise for me. It's charming, it plays really well, and it has legs. The devs understand what makes roguelites so popular, that one more run mentality where those runs aren't too long, feature a lot of variety that you have a little bit of control over, and they just feel good to play. As this is finally on Game Pass, it is an easy recommendation no matter where you like to play. Unlike Indiana Jones fans, this is one skull you should not avoid. Thank you so much for watching. Liking, commenting, and subscribing really does help, but if you visit us on patreon.com forward slash Xbox era, that is the best way to help our channel grow.